Howdy folks, uh, I'm Joel at Earth Tools and we're going to talk today about the new Earth Tools adjustable frame cultivator. This replaces our earlier kind of scissors frame design which had a bunch of interlocking X's that cranked out as you moved the, uh, the adjustment assembly. The old uh, design was a good design, it did a very good job, but it was expensive to produce and it was heavy and uh, yeah, just a lot of time went into that thing. So we revised this to replace it. This will bring the cost down a little bit for everybody. Uh, just works a little better in terms of the indexing because the original one, the original Earth Tools cultivator, had a lever on top with a, uh, a notched adjustment system to where the, the adjustment positions of your frame were kind of notched incrementally. That was pretty good, but this one has a screw crank which means it's infinite adjustment. You're not locked into, oh, the one notch was a little too wide and the other one was a little too narrow. Now you can do it wherever you want it. And it still retains the same feature of having an indexing system built into it that actually cranks the shanks to the correct orientation. That is, no matter how wide or narrow you put the cultivator, the shanks automatically will face straight as long as you put the shanks in their original position straight. That is, if you orient them wrong from the get-go, then they're never going to be right. But it's just a simple adjustment. We'll put those in later. So anyway, this is going to come to you all cranked down and collapsed, and it'll be all wrapped up with shrink wrap with all these various components kind of tucked up in there. The shanks do not come with the cultivator. These are sold separately because not everybody wants all the shanks. This has the capability of running up to seven shanks, uh, most people just run four or five. Uh, I've just got four laid out here, but these are purchased separately and will be packaged, uh, you know, separately from the cultivator body itself. All the hardware that you need is already in place. The various bolts, they're not run all the way down, but you can, uh, if you have a 9 16 wrench and ratchet and a half inch wrench uh, and a couple three quarter inch wrenches, that's all you need to put this thing together. This is all standard. We build this here in Kentucky, so it's all standard fasteners, no metric on this implement. So, um, you will find uh, amidst the various pieces, you'll find these pins, and people say, what the heck is that for? Well, that's your, that's your axle for the gauge wheels that come on it. I know the phone is ringing, but we're closed now, so leave a message, I'll call you back tomorrow. Um, the standard plastic gauge wheels that come with it are just what comes with it. You can also upgrade the gauge wheels on this machine to the disc type gauge wheels, which is a little better for tracking. The disc gauge wheels uh, are just a thin steel disc that penetrates the ground a little bit as you move forward. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a train on a train track. It won't swing from side to side as easily. Uh, but, the, you know, a lot of people find that the plastic gauge wheels are good enough. That's what comes with it. If you want to upgrade to the disc type wheels, that's shown on our website as an option. But anyway, once you have these loose, uh, these are the holders for the disc, or I'm sorry, for the gauge wheels. You slide this through here. Make sure the bolt is loose enough. So it goes all the way through. Give it a little bit of play so you don't not putting it in a bind. This is where your half inch wrench will come in. Just tighten it down, it just pinches the axle in place. Putting a little grease on that axle is probably a good idea uh, to keep it from rusting. So that's going to fit into the axle, I'm, I'm sorry, into the gauge wheel holder, which we haven't assembled yet. But that gets one of your gauge wheels together. Obviously, we repeat that process. If the, uh, sometimes there's a lot of paint in here, and if, there, if you have difficulty fitting the, fitting the axle post through, just take a flat file, or I'm sorry, just take a round file like this and just, you know, ream a little of the paint out so they go through there easily. So, um, actually, let me grab this one here because it goes to this side. I think these are universal, actually. They're packaged with one on one side, one on the other, but I think they will actually, yeah, there's no difference. So, all right, so we will take this bolt off. That's the bolt where it's going to hold on to the index indexing knob on the frame at the front. We're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and lay this frame down. There we go. We're going to slide this in here. Now you'll note we've got a lot of different holes here and a lot of different holes here. There is a hole on this bracket 
that corresponds with each hole on the frame. And you can put these shanks, these are the shank holders, you can put these shank holders wherever you want. So this thing is just totally adjustable, much more so than the old one, which had fixed positions for the shanks. If you want the shanks in different locations, you just take this bolt out and move the shank holder up and down. You could technically add more of these. You could buy these as an accessory and just add a whole bunch of them, but there's not much point in having more than seven shanks on this thing. By the way, the seventh shank, since there's only six holders here that you can see, the seventh shank goes right here, down the middle. So, and there's a, there's a pinch bolt right here to hold that shank in place. At any rate, back to this. So, we just put these kind of in some, you know, general positions. You can obviously change these as you see fit for what your application is. But these things are going to slide into the frame, and then this goes here. Bolt and nut. This is a lock nut. So you don't want to tighten it completely, otherwise the thing won't pivot. So what you're going to do is bring it down snug. Just snug and then back it off about a half a turn so that it pivots nicely. All right. Now this is, let's see, we're two, right. We're in the third hole, so that'll be there. Okay. Actually, I'll put this crank, frame cranked in a little too far. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now, actually, I'll do that on both sides. These are 9 16 head fasteners. Drop this through here. Paint. Yeah, you can see the paint that came out of the hole there. Thank you, Powder Coating Company. Oops. Kind of awkward here, trying to keep out of the way of the camera. Down, whoops, loosen it up about a half a turn or so. Okay, good. Now we're going to stick our shanks through. I only have four shanks here, even though I've got six shanks holders on this thing, so we'll just stick through a couple of them now. Stand this back up. Now, of course, these are going to drop out of place because I didn't really think about that. But slide these up through the holes okay and then you just kind of visually look at this to make sure that it is oriented the correct direction it wants to be you know you want this curve going forward at the direction of travel so that looks about right I'll just grab my ratchet again a 9 16 and crank this thing down Oops. You have to hold on to this because sometimes when you tighten this down, it'll it'll twist that shank a little bit. So make sure it stays oriented properly. There you go. So that locks that one in place. And you can do the same thing with your next one. Actually, I'm going to leave these front ones out. I'm just not going to put anything in those right now because I want to go ahead and get the back one on. The back one or the rear most um, shank holder is where you're going to orient well and i suppose you could do it anywhere um, but you you're this is the carrying assembly or the the rear bracket that is that has your gauge wheel behind it so the gauge wheel is going to slide up through here so this is designed to go directly behind any of the shanks so i'm going to typically you want it as far out from the center as possible because if you've got your gauge wheels toward the inside, it's a little more tippy. Getting your gauge wheels out more gives you more stability so the thing doesn't rock. So this is the typical position for these. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this shank through there. And then this hooks up to the same indexing assembly, kind of the tail end of the indexing uh, bar. And that way the gauge wheel also cranks itself around to orient itself to the direction of travel. So you never have to worry about the gauge wheel not pointing in the correct direction. 
that on there. Lock nut back on here. This bolt is a little longer than it needs to be, but that's fine. Just crank it down. And then loosen it back up just like I did the other one. Actually, I'll just stop a little shy of tightening it. That's good enough. So, that's oriented straight back. So now, when we put our gauge wheel in there, to dictate how deep the shanks are going to go, there, crank that into place. Make sure this shank is oriented properly and crank it into place. Ah, it twisted a little. Okay, now you can repeat that process on the other side, of course. But as you can see, this thing is going to crank. It's going to you know, follow directly behind. As we crank this in and out now, you can see that the gauge wheel stays parallel with the frame. And so do the shanks as this indexing bar cranks everything in and out. So it'll come all the way into there. So you can get the thing down to about uh, the shank, outer shank to shank width on this thing is about 20 inches or 18 inches, something like that. So it's, it can get pretty narrow. And obviously you have a choice whether you mount this gauge wheel with the wheel on the inside or the outside. You just turn the thing around, but it's going to follow directly behind this last shank. So you'd repeat the process for this side, of course. Um, then also, I'm not going to bother putting the rest of this together right now. Let me just flip this thing over. For a sec, no, I'll turn it this way. Since that side is technically up. You will also be mounting this thing to a walk behind tractor, probably using the quick coupling system. And uh, if we knew what we were doing here at Earth Tools, we would have sold you the appropriate quick coupling to go with this mulch or mulch layer. Geez, that's a different video. <laughs> Adjustable frame cultivator. Uh, this is a special quick coupling we manufacture here that actually has a little bit of a swivel in it here. That allows the cultivator a little bit of uh, wiggle on the back so that if you're driving along and you get a little crooked on the bed, you can steer the tractor back and the cultivator will follow the tractor back. If this thing were rigid to the tractor, you couldn't steer it. It would be a rigid unit and to steer it back, which mean, would mean turning the tractor, which would slide the cultivator sideways. Doesn't work. This is why trailers have hitches in the back that actually pivot. So you've got a little bit of pivot built in. Not much. You don't need a lot. You don't want the thing flopping all over when you make turns. The other thing is these swivel hitches are, are manufactured by us with a locking hole for the quick coupling in one side and a slot in the other side. The slot allows, when the quick coupling pin is dropped in here, the slot allows a little bit of movement like this. Typically, you want that because if the tractor wheel drops in a hole on one side, you don't want the whole cultivator to go like this too. You want the gauge wheels on the cultivator to hold that cultivator level. So you want to orient this with the, the locking hole, uh, which is the slot at the top. And you've got some different holes here depending on how tall your tractor wheels are and how you want to orient that. And this will come with a couple nuts and bolts. You just use those to attach that in the appropriate holes. Put a little grease on this so that it doesn't rust and you're good to go there. Then the individual tools that go on the shanks are sold separately as well. We have anything from one and three eighths inch chisels all the way to 10 and a quarter inch sweeps and everything in between. This is a sweep, a V-sweep, uh, used for just sliding along the ground and slicing weeds off. That's probably the most popular thing for these cultivators. They just bolt onto the bottom of the shanks using these nuts and bolts. The shanks come with the nuts and bolts. They're a special plow they call them a plow bolt. Uh, it's just kind of a flat head with a carriage interlock in there, so they go all the way through and lock into place. You just need one wrench. So it goes on like so. You can interchange tools easily with the one bolt. Just run them up on the back and tighten them in place. The bolt's a little longer than it needs to be, but it doesn't matter. It's on the back side, so it's out of the dirt. So you just put as many of those on there as you need, whatever sizes you need. As I say, those are priced and sold separately depending on what, what style and size you want. You can even run the shanks with no tool on them at all if you just want to have kind of a narrow ripper, kind of a subsoiler. 
you could just put one or two or three of these on there and run as deep as you want. That is, you could take the gauge wheels off in that case or just run them all the way up. But the gauge wheels typically are going to be used to adjust how deep those, the, whatever tool you've got on the thing is going to go. Right now, we've got it so that they're just going to shave the top of the ground. Really, I would have to get, uh, you know, to get that into the ground a half an inch, I'd have to pull my gauge wheel up a little bit. Uh, but you get the idea. The important thing is to get everything adjusted uh, 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 the same right to left. That is, if you've got these shanks with three inches projecting at the top and you've got the shanks on this side with three and a half inches projecting, guess what? The thing's always going to want to go crooked because these are in this ground deeper over here. Or actually, it would be this side that would be deeper. So, you know, if, when you're setting this thing up, it's not a bad idea to grab a tape measure and just make sure your measurements are, you know, consistent right to left. Uh, it makes it a lot easier down the road. So that's it. There's really no maintenance to this thing uh, other than, I mean, the screw crank that goes down the middle here to move this thing in and out is a, is a screw. And if you let it sit outside and get all rusty and nasty, it might seize up on you. But there's an open slot on the side. You can actually look in there and see the screw. So you can take some penetrating oil or spray grease and just shoot it in there occasionally to keep that moving well. Um, the, the pivot pins up here, I don't think they're ever going to rust, but again, you can hit those with penetrating oil where this angle adjustment assembly goes up and down. The rest of it is just like farm equipment, it will just sit there and last forever. Thanks for watching.